Back in 2018, I actually went out to the States for almost four months to volunteer at a death row office, which is a capital defense office. And that turned out to be one of the best things that I've ever done with my life to date. And in this video, I basically wanna break down what the process was involved to actually go out there, what the financial commitment on me was, and most importantly, what life was actually like inside and outside the office. Guys, it's nice to have you back on the channel. If you're new here, my name's Taz and I'm a barrister based in the UK. And on this channel, we talk about overcoming the challenges facing law students and explore the nature of our minds through materials, supplements, and practices to create happy, healthy, and optimize mental well-being. For those of you with a keen eye, yes, you guessed it right, that is a new cap, and that's to celebrate our 12th episode. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Is it the old cap or is it the new cap? Now we've actually addressed the cap, let's dive into it. After completing university, I put some time aside to look into these death row internships. And what I found is there's a lot of great charities out there fighting for human rights and fighting against the death penalty. And I'm gonna put a link to a lot of these charities with their internships in the description below. But what's important for you guys to understand is this. There's two types of internships. There's paid internships, and there's unpaid internships. Naturally, you want a paid internship if it's possible. Yes, they're more competitive, but if you can, it's worth throwing your cap, excuse the pun, into the ring. Today's video is gonna focus on my experience volunteering for Amicus ALJ out in New Orleans for the Capital Post Conviction Project of Louisiana. First things first, and that is the finance. And look, I'm gonna tell you right now, do not be fooled, it's not cheap. I had to work my ass off for eight months full-time in a hotel to just about afford it. And to be honest, that didn't even cover it. So what I've done, and I thought it'd be really useful, I went back to my bank statements from three years ago, I pulled them out, and I looked exactly how much I spent over the course of the three months, and I'm gonna break down those costs right now. Let me caveat this by saying everyone spends differently. This, I would say, is based on not living on the breadline, but living definitely conservatively. So with that said, let's get into it. The first thing you have to consider is the visa. There are two types. There's an ESTA, which lets you travel around the States for 90 days at roughly seven pounds. And if you're unfortunate like me, where they reject your ESTA application, you're forced into buying a B1 visa, which comes at a nasty price tag of 118 pounds. Next is the flights. This is seasonal. It depends what time you're going. If you're going in the summertime, which I do recommend, you wanna try going in the summer for two reasons. Number one is that students will be on their summer holidays and hopefully you might be able to fall into the situation which I did, which is where you can actually join someone's student house while someone's away, which is a huge plus. And secondly, it's just summertime. People aren't at university and they're up for having fun. So with that said, flights from Manchester to New Orleans, summertime are roughly 650 pounds. Rent is steep. You're looking at 850 pounds for a month, and that's in Uptown New Orleans. Keep in mind that some states don't have public transportation systems, which means that you might actually have to rent a car, which is a crazy figure I'm not even gonna get into here. All I'm gonna say is thankfully, New Orleans did have a public transportation system, and that cost me 40 pounds a month. You're gonna need a SIM card, and even if you're on the basic data package, you're looking at 20, 25 per month. Let's not forget, you've gotta eat, and that's at least 200 pounds a month, unless you're living off endomy, maybe you could get away with 100, but if you're eating a normal three square meals a day, that's what it's probably gonna be. Now, also, you've gotta think about bills, gas, water, and electric. For me, that came out at 45 pounds a month. What you're interested in is the total figure and that is 4,980 pounds. <laughs> Monthly, that works out at 1,660 pounds. So yeah, like I said from the beginning, it's not cheap. Before you can apply for the Amicus internship, you have to do two training weekends. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, twice. You're lucky though, because when I did it, I had to go down to London, get accommodation, stay there. For you know, I was gonna include that in the finances, but fortunately for you, it's remote. So you've saved at least a few hundred pounds with that. 
And during the training, what you'll learn about is uh, US capital defense law. You will learn about uh, legal research and most importantly, professional conduct while you're out there. The Amicus application for an internship will focus on your motivations for actually wanting to do the internship, but also your level of experience. So normally having a law degree will be a big help or some type of paralegal experience. If you reach out to me, I might actually still have that application and I'm happy to give it you guys as a template. For the interview, I successfully applied for the Amicus Matrix Chambers bursary. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because my interview was different than the general internship. So for me, I was interviewed by two people, a barrister from St. John's and a volunteer for Amicus. The interview focused on the motivations for wanting to do the internship why Amicus and not actually another charity. Most importantly in the interview, your views on the death penalty. So prepare arguments for and against. And then you're probably going to get presented with an ethical, an ethical scenario to actually test your professional conduct. Life outside the office can go one or two ways. You know, I met people who were living with people that they were working with in the office. And when I asked them, they were like, oh, it's a nightmare because they didn't feel like they could switch off. It was uh, when they were in the office, they were in the office, and when they were home, they were in the office. So that's why I alluded to it before, that if you can source accommodation from a student who can legally rent out their room for the summer period, then do it, because at least you know you're gonna have some university students your age to hang out with when you're out of the office. Honestly, and I don't just say this, I mean this, I won the lottery when it came to housemates. I had the best housemates who who made the trip for me like they took me under their wing they showed me around we had we just we had that great energy and we got along really well and honestly without those housemates it would have been a very different trip you know i was living in a fraternity house and when i wasn't in the office there was always something going on if we weren't at a frat party we were out at someone's pool party. There was always crazy stuff going on. It felt like I was in a movie. And New Orleans is lovely. The people are so friendly. For me, I'm the biggest fan of Southern Fried Chicken. Everyone who knows me knows that. So we were checking out a different Southern Fried Chicken joint every weekend. It was like heaven on earth. And outside of the food, there's just so much to see, so much to do. The weather's great. It feels like New Orleans for me is a home away from home and it will always have a special place in my heart. Let's talk about life inside the office. So I want to say this, and this is really important. Everyone's experience is different and every office is different. But with that said, I want to give you guys the real. Not all interns' experiences are a positive one. Sometimes you can go to an office and they don't have any work to give you. You could end up being an admin assistant essentially for three months, which is horrible considering you spent so much money to be there. To be honest, if they don't have the work, they should tell you in advance just not to come because you are spending money to go there, volunteer, and get experience. I remember being in the kitchen, it was around 2 p.m., phones ringing. It's the same friend of mine who went out with me at around about the same time to do his internship at Mississippi or Missouri, somewhere like that, one of the offices. I answered the phone and he said, Taz, I've left. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. I've left. I said, why? He said, basically, he, he was scanning for two months and he went up to his boss and said, I don't want to, you know, I've come here to see some stuff. Can you, can you give me something else other than scanning? <laughs> And next day he was scanning, and the day after that he was scanning, and the day after that he was scanning nine to five. And you know what? I don't blame him for leaving. I felt bad for him. But you know, the reason why I share this story with you is that not only was it the way, honestly, it was such a be there moment. Had you heard him on the other side of that phone, I was in fits, I was in tears. But the reason I share that story with you is because it shows you that some of the internships can go south and you wanna go into this with your eyes open. Fortunately for me, that was not my experience. So I documented everything, every part of the journey in this journal. And what I'm gonna try and do is give you a flavor of what life was like for an intern at CPCPL. Most memorable part of the trip, hands down, and it only happened at the very end was when I got to go out to uh, Angola, which is LA State Penitentiary, and actually interview people on death row. The night before, I knew who I was gonna be interviewing, so I read their files. We woke up at five in the morning and uh, we set off on the drive. We got there for like eight or nine, 
a right, it was huge, it was massive. It was like the size of Manhattan, this prison. And at, right at the very back was uh, the death row section of the prison. And I remember getting out of the car, going through, and literally the conversation uh, by my attorney supervisor was like, okay, good luck, I'll see you at 5 p.m. I was like, what? <laughs> Just that was it, left to it. And I went in and pretty much interviewing the whole day. So I interviewed four or five clients and the conversations were fascinating, all really different. When lunchtime hit, I was given a menu. I ended up getting one of them lunch, I think. He had a steak sandwich, a cheese steak sandwich uh, with a Coke. And the conversation was just flowing, just getting to know them, learning about their life before prison and how their perspective had shifted almost 25 years behind bars and how the prison system had changed dramatically. So really eye-opening conversations. I took a lot away from that experience. The biggest project that I worked on at the office was that I assisted in drafting a post-conviction petition that was actually filed to the Supreme Court of Louisiana, appealing the client's death sentence by lethal injection. Every Wednesday, they had these uh, brown bag lunch events where you would essentially take your lunch to a presentation given by someone in the criminal defense sphere who was uh, talking about uh, death sentence, lethal injection, and other forms of execution, and what they're doing in the fight against uh, abolishing the death penalty. By the end of my time at the office, I was asked if I would create and organize a forensic uh, science database using the materials referenced by a very well-known and prominent criminal defense investigator uh, so that the office could have more or less a, a go-to manual or guide to assist them with their criminal defense work. Other tasks I did were reviewing trial transcripts, I did legal research, I was proofreading things, scheduling, the standard things that you'd expect in any office really, uh, but I am really grateful to CPCPL because they just created such a warm, welcoming environment when I was there and they really added to making the trip inside the office just as great as outside. Thank you guys for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed that one, but please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, then make sure to like and subscribe. It allows me to continue developing the channel for you guys. And other than that, guys, you know what it is. I'll see you at the next one.